Uh, Today is going to be a fairly short meeting. We're just doing a short run recap. Uh, we know you guys have midterms, we have midterms, so we thought we'd keep it short, let you get back to studying. Uh, that's a joke because nobody actually studies. Um, so, very briefly, I'm going to talk about Turcon. Um, Turcon, as many of you know, is a hacker convention that Swift goes to every year. It's in San Diego. It's pretty cool. Um, basically, the way the con works is there's a bunch of talks. And um, I'm going to show you some of those talks uh, on a variety of technical subjects. And then also, uh, they have a lockpicking village, hardware hacking village. Um, a village is basically just a room full of equipment so that you can try things out. Uh, they also had a tamper village. Um, for those of you who know what Tamper Evident Contest is. So, uh, let me show you what some of the talks were. So this is the website, it's a pretty nice website. about many of the cons like DEF CON and TORCON uh, and Layer 1 is that the websites have all the information of the talk and sometimes they even post the presentations. If you go on the DEF CON website under the, uh, they call it the hard drive, then they have pretty much every talk ever videotaped. So um, you can go on there, browse through them. They come with slides, they come with video. It's all very nice. Um, <clears throat> Torcon doesn't do that, but a lot of the talks are still available on YouTube. Um, so, for example, uh, this was a talk that was given. Um, let me see if I can. So, it was talking about meshing Android uh, devices together. So, essentially, he wrote his own code so that he could have a whole bunch of Android phones and they would automatically connect one another over Wi Fi. So, you could have sort of this distributed. Wi-Fi network, um, and they, they tested it in live situations, it worked really well. They had, I think, 500 devices connected all at once, so that was pretty cool. Um, uh, there was a talk on, oh, that's loud. <laughs> Inspirational music. Oh, this is the beginning. So, um, this was a talk given by Drew Porter. Drew Porter is a guy that red teams at the Western Regional CCDC. So, if you're on CCDC <coughs> or go to watch CCDC, you might see him. Um, so, I, I'm just showing you the videos to kind of give you an idea of what the con looks like, what the talks look like. So, this is actually a really interesting video to watch. They're each about 45 minutes long, so we don't have time to get through a whole one in a meeting. Um, I will put the links up uh, on uh, our website. However, if you just YouTube TourCon14, that's how I found all of these. Um, so uh, basically what he's talking about is uh, attacking cell phone tower stations because they've gotten really good at reconnecting with cell phone devices. And so he basically uses that combined with the universal radio peripheral uh, to fool them into thinking that he is a cell phone tower, uh, and then attacks a, an actual cell phone tower. So it's pretty cool. Um, uh, he also gave a talk, more inspirational music, on uh, Dusknet, which is essentially um, a Dustnet was a, a talk on uh, what would happen, it was sort of a, a zombie apocalypse scenario, if the entire internet went down, then what would you do? Uh, if you had no cell phones, no internet, you know, sort of, again, sort of an end times sort of situation. Um, his point was this has happened in other countries, and so uh, it could happen here, but what he had done is he had built a box that you could have a whole bunch of them, and they would interconnect, similar to the mesh network with the Android devices. Uh, and 
then it would provide cell phone and wireless for 10 kilometers. So, and, and like I said, you could mesh them together, it was fully encrypted, you could join and unjoin. Uh, really interesting stuff. So, uh, that's a cool talk to check out. His site is I am Redshift. Um, and then there's also uh, Hacking Bluetooth. We can actually watch the first part of this to give you an idea of what it's like.
point. So from there, we have something that looks like this. This is a Bluetooth low energy packet as output by and over here. What does this mean? How do we interpret it? Read the manual. Seriously, it's actually a pretty readable manual. <coughs> so um, I won't go into too many details about this, but this is how that packet actually breaks down practically. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of headers and so forth. And finally, we get to the meat of the packet at the bottom. It's a heart rate packet. Great. So what we have now is we can turn RF into packets. We can get these packets from an Uber tube. I actually captured this off of my heart monitor while it was running. So what do we do now? Let's follow the connections. So a, a way of Bluetooth low energy connection works is there are 37 data channels, and the master and the slave each hop along the 37 data channels according to a hopping pattern. It's a very straightforward pattern. You just add a fixed value to the current channel you're on to find the next channel. And the master and the slave each transmit one packet for time slot. I mean, there's no, there's no good place to stop it. But so that's kind of what the talks are like. They can be very technical. They're not always that technical, but you can get a lot of really good information out of them. Um, one of the other cool things that they do at cons is is they uh, they have electronic badges. Wait. Yeah, so. Um, Almost always, there's some sort of microprocessor. They do, sometimes it's just a generic uh, 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 microprocessor you're doing. You can do specific things with them. They have uh, pin headers on them, so you can solder pieces on and do a variety of things. Or sometimes they have very specific purposes. Uh, last year at TourCon, the badge could be turned into an UberTube, which is for Bluetooth hacking. This year, uh, the badge is a software-defined radio. So basically, software-defined radio is a way to process radio signals in software instead of hardware. So normally the way it works is radios have a very specific frequency that they're tuned to, and they're very, very, very good in hardware at uh, processing the incoming signal and then passing it to you know, a computer or um, something with the, with the signal already processed and finished and ready to use. Uh, Software-defined radio works off of the idea that computers have gotten fast enough that we can actually process vast amounts of data in real time. And so all you need to do software-defined radio, instead of having expensive hardware, you can do it really cheaply with um, uh, simple hardware that passes the straight, the raw data of the radio signal to a computer, and the computer processes it and then spits it back out. So that's what the badges were this year, is uh, they were software-defined radios um, built by a guy named Michael Osman. He built the Ubertooth, he does uh, wireless hacking. Really, really a smart guy. His website is Great Scott Gadgets, and it's got a whole bunch of information on a whole bunch of wireless topics. So um, uh, the idea of the badge was it's a really cheap solution uh, that they could put in everyone's hands. So, um, uh, you know, basically, it's just a microprocessor with an antenna hooked up to one port. So it reads in whatever, it, the radio itself is sub gigahertz, meaning that the frequency is less than one gigahertz. Um, and anything in that range, you can process. There is a lot of things in that range. Uh, wireless is outside of that range. Wireless is 2.4 gigahertz, right? Um, as is Bluetooth, but there's a bunch of other things you remember some of the things, Zero? Some of what things? Some of the things that sub gigahertz uh, processes in the frequency? Um, GSM? Yeah, GSM is in there, so, and. Uh, it was one really big one. Yeah, and I can't remember what it is. Zigbee. Zigbee. Uh, who's familiar with Zigbee? Show of hands really fast. Okay, well, Zigbee's are a uh, small wireless radio um, that essentially. Um, it's 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 sort of like wireless, but it's got a it's it's designed for low power. So you can have a whole bunch of these radios together, and they'll they'll mesh. And um, they're used in smart meters. They're used in home automation systems. Uh, and so you can do lots of fun things. So what Zero is going to do is he's going to do a really brief 
Um, Actually, I, I don't know. Is this, uh, this isn't the PGA. <laughs> Other side, dude. Uh, coming out of the port. On the, look straight. On the right. desk. Right. desk. I was under the keyboard. <laughs> uh, so basically, what they did is at the beginning, you came in, they gave everybody a badge, and um, they gave you the open source hardware and the open source software, meaning that you knew exactly what was on the badge, you knew exactly what was programmed onto the badge, and then they said, go at it. So a bunch of people hacked the badge, they put stuff on it, they tried to do fun things with it. The interesting part about this, I don't know if any of you remember. Uh, the hack that I did on the IM me, the pink girls toy that I turned into a wireless spectrum analyzer, but this uses the same radio, same idea. So um, it's even got the exact same pins on it that the IM me has. Um, so you can use a GoodFet to flash it. GoodFet is just a, a programming uh, chip. And uh, and it was kind of interesting to see what people were pulling. You could you could pull. Um, all kinds of data. You could even see, you know, you send some sort of signal in the sub gigahertz range, and then you could see it pop up on your computer. Um, and everyone had one. In fact, some people got the badges talking to each other, which is pretty cool because you could both send and receive because the antenna is on an analog port, which can do both input and output. So, um, really fast, we're just going to bring up a spectrum analyzer. Maybe. Yeah, because my monitor starts working. Okay. All right, so how do I switch this? How do I work this back? To switch to laptop. And it talks to you. Yeah. Hey! You know, okay. Thing we're doing. So the tool that is used with the badge is called RF Cat. Um, Zero, interrupt me whenever you're ready. I'm just going to go. Okay, so the software is called RFCAT, and um, it's an open source software designed specifically for sub gigahertz signals. It's available for use with a number of different chips. Um, I think this chip is a CC1111, um, but the website lists a whole bunch of chips that it's useful for. So uh, what he's doing is he's getting RFCAT set up to work with uh, a spectrum analyzer. A spectrum analyzer basically is a piece of software that reads in a bunch of frequencies. So let's say that I'm seeing frequencies in the wireless range, in the Bluetooth range, in the GSM range, in the GPS range, and it's, it's sort of a histogram of how much uh, that frequency is being used. So you can see which spectrums are active. Um, and it generally is represented by a vertical bar chart. So, um, hold on, I'm just changing the font size. Okay. So, the way that you originally connect to the badge is you plug it in and you connect it to the computer and uh, download RFCAT online. And you don't even have to install it, you can actually just run uh, a Python script right inside the file you download. Um, Well, we should be able to see the spectrum analyzer just fine, right? Yeah. It's just kind of yeah, no, it's all good. Hmm. Let's let's do that. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so the commands that he's typing in um, will be too small to see, but he can read out what he's doing as he goes along. Yeah, so I sort of am just at an interactive Python shell, and RFCAT just gave me an object D that sort of represents the uh, the chip there. So I call d.sum function and it does it. So I call it spectrum analyzer and there you go, it prints out a nice pretty, you know, spectrum analyzer graph. Is there a way to see what those two peaks are at? Uh, not that I know. Okay. This is about this as very top. Right? Oh yeah, there we go. This is about as complicated as it gets. So that's like a <coughs> right. at 920. Can you scroll back and forth, Zero? Mm, I don't think so. So basically what this is doing is this is just peaking when you have a frequency in use. So you can see there's two big peaks in the 911.99 and the 924.48. So um, well, it's somewhat RFID. There's also other things in that frequency 
And it sort of shifts as I move it around. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, green line? Is that like a max? Yeah. yeah. That's sort of an average, I think, as well. Doesn't it go down? Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. It, it kind of looks like a max. Yeah, it's a max. I think it's, it's a max, a but it's like got a time but, limit but or something. But they are shrinking there. I think purple is Oh, yeah. It's zero. What if I put another one? So, one of those frequencies. So, will it show it on there? Yeah, can try. yeah. I can let's try this. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and try it. So, basically, the white lines are the incoming signal, uh, and it's sampling, as you can see, fairly quickly. And then the green line is sort of an average of the, of the max peaks, which gives you an idea of which signal. You know, so, if, let's say you had a burst of signal that was too fast for the human eye to catch. The green line would show it because it would pop. And then uh, you notice on the left here, there's a high peak. There's nothing there. That's because someone sent something in that range, and uh, now it's not transmitting. So this is not, as you can tell, like a super, super functional spectrum analyzer. But everyone had one. And you could also transmit with these as well. So they were doing all kinds of mesh networks. Um, I've said that a lot this talk. Who doesn't know what a mesh network is? OK, so a mesh network is basically where you have a bunch of devices. Normally, devices only talk to another device. So it'd be like, I'm just talking to you. And uh, so Adrian and I are having a conversation. And that's a standard wireless device. A mesh network would be like if I was having a conversation with three or four people. And every time someone joined in, I talked to them, and they talked back to me, and then they talked to members of the group. It's essentially, instead of having point-to-point -point communication, you have several points talking with several points all at once kind of communication. So that gets complicated with wireless, because if you're trying to do things like encryption, you have to manage a group encryption. Even if you're just trying to do things like um, SYN act, you know, oh, hi, I want to talk to you. Are you, are you listening? Then that device may or may not know Oh, it's talking to me. So how do you manage multiple devices? Um, so it's really crucial to be able to not only see a bunch of signals all at once, but process them. Which is the cool part about software-defined radio is that um, it's fairly easy to do not complex things like, um, I'm sorry, it's, it's easy to do things that are complex like um, uh, dynamically shift frequencies. Let's say we're all talking on channel number six, and then channel number six gets kind of busy, then we can all say, oh, we're switching over to 11 now, and normally that'd be hard, but with software-defined radio, it's easy, because it's all being processed on the back end. So you have as much digital processing power as your computer can stand. And uh, that's quite a bit these days. So um, software-defined radios are really cool. Uh, Michael Osman, <coughs> who we've mentioned a couple times, is starting a project called HackRF. HackRF is essentially um, a huge open source community project for software-defined radio. He's built a chip called, what was it called? The, the Juggernaut. Nope. Something like that, though. I can't remember. It, it's on his website. I can't remember what it's called. But it, it's essentially a, a really, really nice software-defined radio that's at least a third of the price of the standard in industry standard uh, USRPs. So a USRP stands for Universal Software Radio Peripheral, and it's made by Texas Instruments, and it's essentially the industry standard for software-defined radios. He's designed something that is just as good, if not better, for a third of the cost, and the hardware and the software is all open source. And he's looking for volunteers. So go to his website. Uh, it's it's uh, greatscottgadgets.com, uh, I think. It might be .org. And then slash hackrf. So um, it's, a, it's a neat opportunity, and he's looking for volunteers. So check it out. Um, that's pretty much it for today. Um, let's give Zero a big hand. a considerable amount of time trying to figure out how the badge worked and getting the demo ready because uh, it's definitely not as straightforward as it should have been, especially on Arch. No. So um, that's it for today. Next week, Tuesday, we're going to have a speaker come in. Um, 
and he's going to be talking about uh, GPUs. That's uh, graphics processing units. So um, uh, he's going to give an intro to that. It should be very interesting. Um, you should learn a lot. And GPUs are really cool because they're not just for graphics anymore. Um, because of the way the uh, architecture of the GPU is put together, it can basically multi-thread things really, really fast. One of the primary uses for GPU today is for cracking password hashes. So you can essentially uh, blaze through a whole bunch of um, hashes really fast. That's interesting because that allows people to crack passwords really fast. So if your password isn't all that secure, if it's not very long, or if your hash is easy to get, uh, that's bad. So it's something that we want to pay attention to. Um, and uh, this is going to be an intro on how those work and um, a little bit more on why they're so effective for multi-thread. So uh, come back next week. And uh, this Friday, we are going to be having a movie night in here. It should be a lot of fun. We're going to watch uh, Ghost in the Shell and Hackers. So um, it, it's just going to be fun. We're going to have you know delicious food and um, enjoy ourselves watching movies on the big screen. This room is pretty well suited for watching movies. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you on Friday. That starts at 6 in here. Um, and depending on uh, how the night goes, it'll go um, until the movies are done. So thanks, guys. Um, have a great uh, sixth week, and we'll see you next week.